from that influence. Today, we're looking at gun accessories for various systems, including the 3DO. Our main review is the Lion King on the Mega Drive. And Violet meets friends with a virtual puppet Yay! called Tizzy, the latest innovation from the people who brought you the Muppets. Oh, 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 Fertlers, I've got terrible toothache. I've tried everything. Medicine, herbal remedies, even thinking good thoughts. There's only one thing for it. <laughs> oh, but first, uh, here's a cheat for... Mega Man on the Game Boy. It gets you whisked to the last level. Oh, oh, oh! Just enter A2, A3, B4, C2, and C3 on the code screen. And there you are, the last level. Oh, oh, right, 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 that is it. Oh, 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 Fertlers, it fell on my foot. Oh, 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 toothache's cured, though. Hey, oh, my foot. Oh, 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 mouth feels much better. Oh, my foot. Looks like he's got foot and mouth disease. All right, I give up, I submit, uncle. Shut it, Crane. These Space Age guns and headsets are the latest in home Quasar battle gear from Sega. All right, off you go, Scarpa. The guns have an infrared transmitter, and there's a receiver in the other player's headset. So I can only shoot Andy, and Andy can only shoot me. Oh, and that din means that I've been hit. OK, Andy, one, two, three. Each player starts off with nine lives, which is displayed in the headset there. And the reason for that is that it's reflected down into this retractable eyepiece, so you can see how you're doing. It's just as well to keep an eye on how you're doing, because once it's down to zero, it's game over. Oh, and there's no escaping either, because the guns have an incredible range of 120 feet. Oh, she got me. Oh. And at 30 quid a set, I should imagine these will be in a few Christmas stockings. Guns are the hot accessory this year. This is the 3DO version of Mad Dog 2 The Lost Gold, follow-up to the brilliant arcade game Mad Dog McCree. It works like this. Your television picture is made up by a gut of light racing rapidly from left to right from the top to the bottom of your screen. When you fire the gun, the screen flashes white, and this sensor in the end of the gun figures out where the dots got to and positions the shot accordingly. Aha, looks like a couple of rootin' tootin' shooters are ready for a brawl. Didn't last long, did you? Lethal Enforcers 2 is another sequel to a classic arcade game. Once again, it's set in the Wild West. Two people can team up together to gun down the dastardly varmints that have hit town. There's some good speech and a plethora of different weapons to keep you culling those bad guys. Continuing in the Western theme, this is the original and, in our opinion, the best version of Mad Dog McCree on the CDI. The arcade game was the first to use Laserdisc, and the home version is the first to use full motion video. It's the nearest you'll get to the arcade experience. Unlike its 3DO counterpart, it doesn't use screen scanning, it uses infrared. It's that box of tricks at the top of the monitor that does all the work. OK, let's see how I get on one-on-one -on -one against Mad Dog himself. Draw! You've seen the film, you've bought the cuddly toy, and you've hummed along to the Elton John tune. Now it's time to play the game. Disney's latest blockbuster, The Lion King, hits the shops on the Mega Drive, Game Gear and Master System this week. It's out on the SNES next week, with versions to come on Game Boy, NES, Amiga and PC. You follow Simba through ten levels from Exiles Cub to fully grown King of the Plains. The animation is, uh, staggering. But as ever, the big question is how does it play? Here's to hail. This has to get the prize as the most appealing game character of all time. The cub's beautifully drawn and he's a real treat to play. The good thing about this game is that it's not just all bouncing around, there's a strong puzzle element. Here you have to roar at the monkeys so they turn round and throw you in the opposite direction over the river. The colours on this level are a bit garish, but the sound effects are excellent. Here the rhino's just throwing me up and the monkeys are throwing me over the river, so I should be able to complete the level pretty soon. There, I've landed on the ostrich and from now on it's just average platform stuff. Halfway through the game, as in the film, Simba grows up and you get to play as the Lion King and you can have some pretty good fights like this one. Some of the levels in the game are a bit too linear and this is one of them. 
Another gripe I've got is that some of the puzzles in the game are far too hard. You just don't know what you're supposed to do. Like here, for example, you can't go left and you can't go right, so what's the point? It took me ages to figure out what you have to do. You have to jump up and hit the stalactites on the roof so they fall down and you can access the lower part of the level. It's the best looking, most playable Disney game yet, but it does get a bit annoying when you keep getting stuck. This is brilliant. It's full of cute touches and will keep you amused for hours. It looks good, but it's just too hard to work out what's going on sometimes. And the scores for Lion King, a purring four from the boys and a roaring five from the girls. Excellent scores. Now, have a look at this. 25 years ago today, Sesame Street was launched on an unsuspecting world. It featured an entirely new cast of characters, Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy and Big Bird. The man behind Kermit was called Jim Henson, and the company he founded is still making puppets and puppet shows. A couple of weeks ago, Violet journeyed to their British headquarters to check out their latest project. I've come to Studio B in the jungles of northwest London to unearth the secrets of Jim Henson's latest puppet creations. Come with me. Three, two, one, action. We've been invited backstage for the filming of a brand new programme called The Animal Show. It's being brought to us by the same people who did The Muppets and the larger-than-life creatures in films like The Dark Crystal and The Flintstones. And these guys. Hey, look, it's a camera. There's a camera down. Hi! Hey, Stinky! The yeah, Animal Show is a chat camera. show for animals, where, 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 hosted by a skunk where? called Stinky and his polar bear pal, Jake. We have to go work now. But at Henson's, they're doing something completely new by mixing conventional puppetry with the latest computer technology, as their third star is a computer-generated bee. Up until now, when performers had to work with animated characters who were drawn in later, it was always difficult for them to react to an empty space or to know exactly where to look. Now, with this new technique, both director and performers can see the character as it's being generated, at the same time as the rest right, of the action. Okay. I see. Hi, Violet. Hi, I'm Tizzy, a computer graphic bee. Hi, Tizzy. <laughs> Traditional puppetry techniques are still used to control Tizzy's movements, but what's completely new is that Tizzy doesn't actually exist. She's entirely computer generated. <gasps> wow. Tizzy started off life as a basic 3D model. She was then scanned into a Silicon Graphics Onyx computer, and the next step is to add all the immense detail of character which will really bring her to life. Having created this wireframe from thousands of triangles, they produce a skeleton which will enable Tizzy to move. It's not based on the true skeleton of a bee, but it does enable them to add facial moves and expressions which make Tizzy larger than life. The final stage is to link these <clears throat> movements in the computer to the controllers that the puppeteers use on the floor of the studio. There are actually two Tizzies. This is a low-resolution version of Tizzy, produced live in real time. Later, it gets replaced by the final Tizzy, who has much more detail. The three puppeteers work in unison to provide all the actions to make Tizzy believable. She can smile, laugh, fly around and zoom in and out of the screen. She's actually quite a handful, and there's a lot for the production team to get right. How do you think you'd cope in the hot seat? This is real fantasy stuff. I've always wanted to direct a Henson movie. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the take stored on computer is only the beginning. Now the real work begins. Tizzy Mark II is created upstairs in the computer editing suite. We do essentially the same process that we were doing on the floor, but this time taking more time over each frame, adding a certain amount of blur, putting the wings on, and using a much higher resolution model. And the result is like this. But seeing as Tizzy doesn't really exist, how does the cameraman keep her in focus? Well, that's one of the things that we've had to teach the cameraman to do, is to focus on things that aren't there. Um, and so it gives the effect of Tizzy always being in focus and the background blurring, which just adds to the realism in the shot. So he just guesses? He just guesses, yeah. <laughs> one day later, the finished model is stunningly realistic. Even though it hasn't quite got the power to sting like a bee, or has it? Yeah. Um, sorry, Tizzy, I hate to break this news to you, but you don't actually exist. You only exist inside a computer. Are you sure? Maybe you're the one that doesn't exist. Yeah, well, fortunately for us, you do exist. It looks like a good show. Do you have a good day? Yeah, it was brilliant. And look out for the show, because it should be on our screens in the new year. But now for this week's news and previews. Here's a Christmas present idea for the sad old furtler in your life. Next time your dad goes on about, oh, the good old days of video games when men were boys and sprites were black and white, shut him up with this. 
It's Space Invaders on the Game Boy. You can even play it on the Super Game Boy and get this exciting arcade background. <gasps> Groovy. If you're a fan of the Zelda series, then look out for this one at The Secret of Mana, a new fantasy adventure game. It's an epic tale of strange beasts, magic swords and warriors, but the hero talks more like Beavis and Butthead than a young Galahad, out late this month on the SNES. Save a space in your games cupboard for this one, Batman the Animated Series on the SNES. It features all of the Caped Crusader's favourite foes, including some excellent sequences with the Joker. The nine levels are packed with action, and there are plenty of devious puzzles to test your brain power too. Welcome to the world of Full Throttle, a dark and dangerous place on PC CD-ROM. You play the role of Ben the Biker, a bit of a rough diamond who's been wrongly accused of a dreadful crime. Your mission is to avoid arrest while you try to clear your name. Due out at the end of this year. Leather jacket not included. Oh, oh, oh Furtless, if you should ever have the misfortune of having a large heavy weight drop onto your toe, then this should cure it. <laughs> Ah, ah, whoa, whoa. Apparently, uh, it takes a few seconds to work, so uh, here's a cheat to be getting on with. It's for Rollo to the Rescue on the Mega Drive, and it gives you a secret cheat option menu. On the intro screen, hold down left and up and A and C, and then reset uh, the machine. Now, keep them held down for a few seconds, like this, uh, and then press... B, and you'll get your secret cheat menu. Hey! Oh! My foot! It's cured! It's cured! This is really good stuff. Dr. Salt's patent throbby toe healing stuff. Oh, ingredients. Um, methyl lactylate, anti-caking agent, seaweed extracts. Oh, and what's this? Side effects. Tiredness and mega hirsutitis. Oh, I wonder what that is. Oh. Oh, I feel strangely tired, Vertlers. Hmm. Crane to base, crane to base. I've got two on my tail and I'm going in for the kill. Crane to base, mission accomplished, awaiting further instructions. He's Berlin to crane. Look, just get on with it, all right? Oh, I was enjoying that. This is just one of the many VR helmets soon to be flooding the marketplace, as well as this one, the VFX-1. We wanted to show you this one, the Cybermax, which is supposed to be ready now, but unfortunately, the one we've got is just a nice bit of plastic which doesn't work at all, so don't hold your breath for that one. The game I was playing is really just a demo of one of the packages soon to be available that'll let you build your own VR world. It's called 3D Wear, and it's really easy to operate because it comes with 500 objects that you just select and drop into place. Look, I'll show you how it works. This is an overhead view of the virtual world that you want to create. The two lines there are the sort of X and Y axes, so you can position objects correctly. There's a whole menu of things to choose from. There we are, roads and mountains and bridges. And if I just put a house, a couple of houses in there like that, and then we can scroll through. A skyscraper there and a skyscraper there. Now we need some roads to run through Craneville. So we'll put a road there and a road here. Over the top of that, we'll have that bit of curvy road there, and then we'll stick some bridges in here. There, there, and there, and there it is, my masterpiece, an oasis in a VR desert. That is Craneville. Obviously, building a full virtual world takes a little bit longer than I've just done it in, so here's one I made earlier on. As VR games and hardware become more available for home systems, packages like 3 d Wear will be essential for games designers and programmers so that they don't have to start every world from scratch. Me, I'm off down to Crane Onnels for a virtual burger. Now for some more games reviews. It's fast, it's funky, and it's been hailed in some quarters as the new Mario Kart. It's Street Racer for the SNES. It's the first SNES racing game with four-player split-screen action, although it's pretty difficult to see what you're doing, and there are loads of other options, including a footy match and a smash em up rumble. Wacky stuff. Here's Lisa. This is an amazing game with superb graphics. It leaves most other racing games standing. This is Championship. There are eight different players. I'm playing Frank. There are loads of different tracks to choose from. You can fly around corners, and you can also punch players to get them out of the way. When you finish the game, you can replay it and look at it from different angles. This is the football option on the ice pitch. I didn't like this because it's very hard to see the ball. And when you do get the ball, it's even harder to maneuver, even though I use my special move, which lets me fly. And then it's even harder to actually score the goal. I think Street Racer is better than Mario Kart. It's got a huge range of tracks and excellent ways to destroy opponents. It's full of brilliant ideas. The football game is a stroke of genius. I just couldn't put it down. 
I'm not keen on this. If you crash, it's too hard to get back in the race. Street Racer gets a full throttle four from the girls and a turbocharged five out of five from the boys. The original FIFA is the best-selling football game ever. Now there's new improved FIFA 95, which features nine new leagues from around the world. You can play in the French First Division and the Dutch Premier League. The programmers have even included an imaginary American league in an effort to sell the game across the water. So you can play like an American. But let's face it, who'd want to? It's out on the Mega Drive tomorrow. Here's Ben. It looks just the same as the original FIFA, but when you start playing, there are a few important differences. Here I'm playing Brazil in the yellow against Crystal Palace in the red, which is an interesting combination. The gameplay is much faster than the original FIFA, but the biggest improvement is the passing. It's much easier. Here I'm taking a shot, and I'll save by the keeper. This could do with being a touch faster, but apart from that, I can't see how they can improve it. This is brilliant. It's got everything that you'd want from a football game. This is the football game to get in 95. It's the league leader. And it's 4-0 to FIFA 95 from both the boys and the girls. Migraines, mildew, mothiness, aha! Mega Hirsutitis, <laughs> a condition where the sufferer's hair grows wildly. In particularly bad cases, it can grow up to 10 feet in a day. Oh, no. The only known cure is to rub the affected area with Dr. Salt's patent rubbing stuff. <laughs> I've got some of that somewhere. Ah, yes, there it is. <laughs> now, while that's working, here's a cheat for Rainbow Bell Adventures on the SNES. <laughs> Just pause the game. And then press up, up, down, down, L, R, L, R, B, A. Then when you unpause the game, your pod will be well powered up. Oh, and some more good news, Fertless. The cure worked. No more side effects. And it's all down to good old Dr. Salt. <laughs> Last week's competition prize was a SNES with Super Bomberman 2, and the question was, in which country were fireworks invented? The answer was China. We had nearly 20,000 entries, but our winner is Nicholas Ria from Norwich. Well done, Nicholas. Ten runners-up get bad influence better than sleep t-shirts. This week, we've got a SNES and a copy of Street Racer to give away. The question is, which Formula One Grand Prix is raced around the streets of a European city rather than a racetrack? Phone in your answers on 0891 555 999. Calls will cost no more than 25p and lines close at midnight on Monday. But make sure you get permission from whoever pays the phone bill. Because as we all know, you can't win if you don't ask permission. And we do check. And finally, take a look at this. The long-awaited Micro Machines 2 for the Mega Drive. It features 54 new tracks. It features better control over your cars. Andy, Andy, tell them about the really brilliant bit. Yeah, the really brilliant bit is that it's a simultaneous eight-player racing game. No, the other brilliant thing, you know. Oh, yeah, the cartridge has got two extra ports in it, so you can plug in two extra joypads, and eight players can play sharing the joypads. It's and, fantastic. Andy, tell them about the best feature of the game. Oh, yeah. Violet thinks the best bit about Micro Machines 2 is that she's in it. Anybody want to know how Violet got into Micro Machines 2? No! Yeah, well, I'll tell you anyway. Stage one. <laughs> Take some funky reference photographs of our Violet. Stage two. Oh, do keep up, Violet. Turn it over. There we are. Preliminary sketches to create the caricature. This was one of my personal favourites. Sadly, it didn't make it into the game. Stage three. They develop the caricature to a satisfactory stage, i.e. give it lots and lots of hair up the top here. And stage four. <coughs> Finalise the caricature and transfer to computer to create the animation frames. And now, through the magic of television, here she is in the character selection screen. And if you win as Violet, she does this. But if you lose as Violet, she oh. does this. Oh. Did the wrong things. <laughs> That's just about it for this week. Next week, we have a robot special, including a look at Rise of the Robots. See you then. Bye-bye.